and uh, welcome to my channel. I am Stephanie and this is the week 48 November the 24th through the 30th weekly wrap up. The year is almost over. Oh my goodness. As I said, this is the a weekly wrap up for week 48 of 2019, November the 24th through the 30th. Can we can we just say, oh my goodness, I'm filming this on the 1st of December and um, hello, that means we only have 31 days left in the year of 2019. It has been crazy. It has been busy. I read 14 books this week. Oh my goodness. Can we talk about how many books I actually like just fell into? It was a holiday weekend sort of and it was crazy. So I did a vlog for that. So make sure you're checking over on my Patreon, which the information is down in the description box. Uh, so you guys can go over and support. There are going to be a lot of vlogs and things coming up uh, because it's the end of the year. So lots of uh, nominations and things like that. All those stuff is going to be put over there because yeah, I got lots and lots of things coming out. But that's not what you're here for for this video. You're here to hear you are here to talk about the books that I read last week. Like I said, I had 14 of them. If at any time you don't have time to uh, complete this video, because it's probably going to be long because I'm talking about 14 books, uh, make sure you check the description box for the timestamps. There's also affiliate links down there so you guys can purchase these amazing uh, books. Some of them, some of them were, you know, uh, nah. I'll give you guys my honest opinion. You know me. Um, but yeah, let's get into what I read last week. I started the week off with by finishing The Bridal Suite, which is Innkeepers number four by Rachel Ellers. I placed this in women's fiction slash contemporary. Um, I give this book three stars. I give it one steam fan. I read it as an arc and I read it for contemporary a thon, which was ending when I finish this, um, and, or the Contemporary Athon Weekend Edition, oh, I don't know if you guys participated in that, but I did, and this is one of the books, this is a black author, and in this book you have a whole bunch of characters, um, this is one of those books that you need to have read the rest of the series to really understand what's going on in this one, um, in this book you have Nadia and you have Lamar, Nadia is, quitting her job in New York and she's an accountant. She has like a messy breakup and she is possibly going down to New Orleans to run a business that she has that her other friends have as innkeepers and it's just it's, it's kind of messy um but I think it would make more sense had I read the other three books in the series which it, uh, ugh. Um, and Lamar is a single dad. He's a contractor. He's helping, uh, the innkeepers renovate their house, I believe it is, or something like that. Um, it, yeah, there's some fake dating that goes along with it. And like I said, there's just a jumble of stuff that, uh, what else was happening. So I think I would have liked it more had I read the previous books, uh, before jumping into this one. The next book that I finished was The Bookish Life of Nina Hill by Abby Waxman. I place this in Women's Lit. Uh, I give this book five stars. I give it one steam fan. I read it as an arc on NetGalley, even though it released a while ago. Um, I received the art copy. This book is so much fun. It has a whole bunch of books and trivia and this woman's journey. Abby, she, or why did I say Abby? Abby's the author. Nina is our main character and she is this like sort of socially awkward, has anxiety when it comes to people, but loves to do trivia and has all these like fun facts or just useless facts in her head and she loves books and she works at a bookstore and she's like the main person that deals with the programs there and it was so much fun. She doesn't know her dad, didn't know her dad 
for all of her life and then he ends up dying and she inherits some things or she inherits a family she inherits um just this new acknowledgement of her being and things like that her mom is kind of flaky because her mom is like this this free spirit that had her but um left her with a nanny I believe it was a nanny or a caretaker and you know Nina just sort of lives her life and this is her journey and it was so much fun there is a love interest in this that was cute and sweet but for the most part it was Nina's life journey that you get to explore and I was so here for it so here for it the next book that I finished or didn't finish was Mr. Nice Guy by Jennifer Miller and Jason Pfeffer uh, I placed this in contemporary I guess um I DNF this book at 28% 28% seems to be the number that uh I like to quit books lately, uh, but I would give this book one star. It was trying way too hard. I give it one steam fan, and I read it as an arc from NetGalley. It was just trying too hard. So the whole setup is that Lucas is a journalist in this company or in this uh, magazine, and he ends up having a one-night stand that turns into more uh, with Carmen. Carmen is the sex sort of columnist for a rival magazine and she lets it go about how his sexual performance is horrible at 28 percent we still hadn't really gotten to the meat and potatoes of anything it started off good with the two of them hooking up and not knowing who they were and then the, the article coming out but then the rest of it just kind of fell flat and it was like oh i was falling asleep trying to read this and i just couldn't so i dnf'd it it was trying too hard way too hard the next book that i finished was challenge harris brothers number one by amy dawes i placed this in a new adults sports romance i give this book 4.5 stars i give it four steam fans i listened to it as an audiobook and <laughs> It was amazing. This is funny. It's sweet. It's sexy. It's about footballers in England. And yes, so many yeses. So Camden, this story revolves around Camden, who is half of a twin set of footballers that he ends up getting injured and um, has to go into the hospital. And Indy is the doctor that is treating him and from there there is family dynamics that are just absolutely amazing and i was just dragged into the harris brother <sighs> series just i mean just this one book and these narrators that narrated this book was amazing i actually got to meet uh amy and will at Indies Invade Philly about two years ago and I hadn't read them before. Why? I don't know. But now that I have, I am just like, ugh, I am so just uh dragged into this world and um I did I ended up doing a holiday vlog for it. Uh I was gonna do just a holiday vlog for the novellas that I read um but this ended up jumping in there and it turned into a Harris Brothers vlog. So if you wanna see like all of the reactions for all of the books that I'm going to talk about here in just a couple minutes because there are a couple other books in here but uh that vlog will be up over on my Patreon but yes this book drew me into the Harris Brothers family and I just kept devouring them and they were just absolutely amazing <sighs> so it was emotional it was sweet yes oh I just can't say enough about it the next book that I finished was The Art of Racing in the Rain by Garth uh, Stein and this is a fiction book um, I don't know how to even place it anywhere else besides just fiction uh, I give it 4.25 stars I give it zero steam fans I listen to it as an audiobook and this book has also been turned into a movie so I have wanted to read this book anyways because um, it is a movie and I kind of want to watch the movie uh, because of Milo Ventimiglia Ooh, I love me some Milo yes and i sort of knew that this book was about a dog telling us a story but i didn't know the extent of it and there were parts of it that i was just like oh this is uh, this is a little painful 
but overall the story the roundabout way that we get this story Enzo is the dog and we get to see life through his eyes um with his owner Denny and Denny's family it has some moments of grief and death and cancer and it's a family story there are some moments that even though this book uh was written in I think like 2008 or something like that in current times the subject matter probably should have been dealt with um, a little differently. So I am looking forward to seeing if the book was translated a little differently for today's society and for today's um, awareness uh, through the movie and things like that. Because yeah, yeah, some of those moments were a little cringy and um, uncomfortable uh, for the subject matters. There uh, should be there's content warning for um, sexual situations that are unfavorable and yeah. And then cancer, death, and grief. So just giving you a heads up. But overall, by the end of it, I was very emotionally connected with Enzo, our dog. The next book that I finished was Endurance, which is Harris Brothers number two by Amy Dawes. I placed this one in a new adult cont uh Sports Romance, I give this one 4.5 stars. I give it four Steam fans. Listen to it as an audiobook. This one is about Tanner, the other half to our twin setting, and his relationship with the other doctor that does surgery on babies in utero. And da! Ah, yes! Yes! So many yeses. So. I like read these back back to back even though it doesn't seem like it when I'm like naming them off but yes I just dove into this one and was loving it so much I'm so just hooked by this family and it's so good you will be completely just drawn in and the narrator's voices are amazing amazing gives just enough difference so you know which characters you're listening to even though you, and they there. It's like acted out. It's like acted out. So our male narrator is only reading the male parts and our female narrator is only reading the female parts and they have different... Uh, it's just so good. So good. If you can listen to it on, as an audiobook, please do because this whole series is absolutely amazing. Then I read Keeper, which is Harris Brothers number three by Amy Dawes, new adult sports romance. I give it 4.5 stars. I give it four Steam fans. Listen to it as an audiobook. And this one follows Booker, who is the youngest brother, and he is a goalie. <sighs> And Poppy, who is his best friend that moved away and has now come back. And, oh, oh it's a friend relationship story. I'm just, ah, so good. So very good. I loved every single moment of it. And the family moments just, oh, just can continue to draw you in. Then I read End Goal, which is Harris Brothers 3.5. A, uh, by Amy Dawes. This is the short story for a uh, new adult sports romance <laughs> for the Harris Brothers. I give this one four stars. I give it two Steam fans. I listened to this audiobook. It was a sweet, fun look into Camden and Indy's sort of um, relationship. And they, um, I don't want to spoil anything. So this is the story that was uh, included in the cocktails anthology and it was just so much fun so much fun it was so quick it's like a 48 minute audiobook and um i was here for it here for it the next book that i finished was this christmas by sarah spade this is a short story uh, i place it in contemporary i give it four stars i give it three steam fans i read it as an ebook and this is a one night stand ghosted uh to a year later it is the second book in sarah spade's sort of holiday romances uh stories that started with Halloween Boo. And I was looking forward to this one. I didn't love this one as much as I loved Halloween Boo, but it was sweet. It was fun. It's about the older brother uh, from Halloween Boo who ended up coming into town and hooking up with the friend. And uh, Max and Allison are the characters' names. Uh, so Max is the brother, and he can't stop thinking about her, but he hadn't 
put two and two together. They had a one night stand because they gave each other uh, different names. They went with fake names and stuff like that. And this is them kind of getting back together. It was sweet. It was fun. Just wasn't over the top in love with it. The next book that I finished was Cheeky Candy by Mila Hart. And this is a short story, contemporary. Uh, I give it 3.5 stars. I give it two Steam fans. I read this as an arc. And I was not connected with our, our characters. Candace is this woman that is in a male-dominated uh, career. She's the only one uh, in her lab, and they have a new uh, boss that comes in. His name is Harrison, and they end up having that whole boss-employee sort of connection, relationship type thing, and I wasn't completely connected with the story, so um, I it just didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't really feeling this one. It was good. It was cute. But I just, it kind of, yeah. The next book that I finished was Let It Snow by Christy Lee. And this is a short story, contemporary Christmas story. And I give this one 4.25 stars. I give it two Steam fans. I read this as an arc. And this is a childhood crush that uh, ends up coming back. So we have Sullivan, who is the son that has been away from home, stayed away from family because there was, uh, some grief moments that he just couldn't handle. And then when he finally does come home because his grandmother is dying, he ends up seeing a woman named Melissa, who he doesn't recognize, but Melissa is sort of part of the family, has been part of the family. She had a secret crush on Sullivan when they were kids. Now they're older. Uh, there is a bit of an age gap with it. It was so sweet because they really bonded over Granny, even though there is some grief to be had and having this family uh, sort of bond over a passing member was very encouraging and sweet and fun. And I liked Sullivan and Melissa's connection. The next book that I finished was Surrender, which is Harris Brothers number four by Amy Dawes. I placed this one in contemporary sports romance, and I give it 4.5 stars. I give it five Steam fans. I listen to it as an audiobook, and the reason I give this one five Steam fans is because there is a power, sexual power reversal of this one. So this one sort of explores a little bit into the B BDSM sort of dynamic, but not completely. Um, Gareth is the oldest Harris brother, and this is his story. He has been that father figure for the family. As you go along through these books, you will find out that he is the father figure. There is this family dynamic where he is very much in control, and when Sloane comes into his life, she kind of rocks his world, and they have a one-night stand, and then there's a year where they don't really connect. They uh, interact because she is his personal shopper or his personal stylist and they sort of interact but she has a high hand I guess with him about you know what he actually really needs and it's like the first person that has taken the control from him um, for his life because he is so in control and I loved that power exchange dynamic and I was just so here for it it was so hot so steamy, so very steamy. Their, their sexy time is just, whew. Now this one does end on a cliffhanger that I didn't know about because I guess it is a duet. And uh, yeah, I did get to the next book, which is Dominate. Here's Brothers number five by Amy Dawes. And I placed this one in contemporary as well. And Sports Romance, give this one five stars because... It totally blew. It blew me out of the water. I mean, I was in all my emotions for this one. Just up and down and crying and just so... Just, uh, everything is like really wrapped up and Gareth and Sloane 
continue on in the story. They get some answers for some things that happened in Surrender, and uh, it was just so amazing. So very amazing. All the characters are there, all the brothers, all their their families and things like that so technically you could read surrender and dominate together and you know be involved before you read the other books but i suggest you read them in order they're so yummy and so good and you just want to devour them all once you get to that first one so just just read them in order and you will so you will be so emotionally just invested in this family i just whew, love 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 and the final book that I read last week was The Lineup by Megan Quinn. I place this in contemporary sports romance as well. I was a bit on, on a bit of a sports romance kick. Uh, I give this one 4.25 stars. I give it four Steam fans. I read this as an arc. It releases this week on Tuesday, so make sure you go out and pick it up. This is another book in uh, Megan's sort of Brentwood series of baseball players. This one actually follows Jason, who is the catcher, uh, that we have met in the previous books, The Dugout and The Locker Room. Uh, but this is them as they have gotten older. They are professional baseball players now. Jason is, and he went to Tampa after he finished college and everything like that. Well, he now gets to move back to Chicago because he was traded, although he was traded to the rival team. Ooh. But he's back in the town that they are all sort of living in, and Dottie is this hard-nosed businesswoman that noticed him noticed Jason while they were in college because he has a great ass and um you know there's a bit of a secret crush and she ends up saying some things that um she probably shouldn't have Jason is this huge teddy bear he likes to cook and he is such a sweet guy he has um some family dynamics that you just your heart just melts over he's a big old teddy bear I love 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 loved Jason so very much and Dottie was really surprisingly for as hard-nosed as she is or she is as a character I really felt her and her emotions and everything like that there was a moment where I thought I was gonna throw my Kindle because Megan did a thing did a thing Megan and uh I was about to like throw the Kindle but it, it worked out because yeah so that is what I read last week. What I am reading this week, I am currently reading Payback by Amy Dawes, which is a Harris Brothers spinoff. This is about Cousin Alice and one of the football players on one of the teams. <laughs> they met during a wedding and hooked up and some things happened. <laughs> I'm loving this story. Loving it so hard right now. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. I will also be participating in Tis the Seasonathon, which is a readathon that is being hosted by Heather from Bookables and a whole other slew of uh, amazing booktubers. Um, I will also be hosting a Twitter sprint for them um, on Wednesday over on Twitter. So come join me from two to four. Um, I still haven't picked out my TBR for Tis the Seasonathon, like at all. I have no clue why I'll be reading this book this week. Um, I will leave the challenges down in the description box. So if you guys want to join, it starts tomorrow, Monday, and then goes till Sunday. But of course, you guys know my readathons always start on Sunday and go till Saturday. That's just how I roll. So let me know if you have read any of the books that I have just listed off. 14 of them, so many, so very many. Um, and let me know your thoughts on them because, as you guys can see, I pretty much enjoyed most of them. Um, let's discuss them down in the comment section. I think that's all for this video. I hope so. Um, we have a busy day today. Kid has a birthday party to go to, and yeah, so 
trying to get this out to you guys in a timely manner. Um, all the socials are down in the description box, time jumping, all that good stuff. Affiliate links down there. It does not charge you anything extra to use the affiliate links. It just puts a little change in my pocket and I appreciate it. Same with going to the Patreon. You get all the back scenes, lots of vlogs that are going to be going up over there because it's the holiday season and I don't have enough schedule time on this channel to place all those videos that I have to get up. So you'll get a whole bunch of stuff over there. Um, other than that, as always, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there is a feedback form down in the description box where you can help me improve my channel. Thank you for watching and we will see you guys later.